let the gods decide. Oh, shit. What side is it? It's Google. It's called Notebook LM. Wait. Layoffs in gaming, man. No, not layoffs in gaming. Why does it keep doing the layoffs in gaming one, man? Hello? You're supposed to do the Song of the Sidestep King one. You behave. The battle begins in 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Commence combat operations. <laughs> Map hack a gun line. Learn from this and come back stronger. Our key for real hero, where? They're killing my puffer fishes, though. That's not fun. Arranged. It's pretty annoying. We need some slime stacks. Really hard to stack slime stacks on four range though. You need slime stacks before level four? I do. I do. I always need more slime stacks. Alright deep divers, get those headphones ready. We're about to plunge into the world of online gaming and its dedicated fans. Buckle up, because we're uncovering how a game, specifically Heroes of the Storm, sparks a level of dedication that explodes into the real world. We're talking fan art, videos, mm -hmm. and get this, even poetry. Yeah, poetry dedicated to like legendary players. Poetry, it's amazing. Legendary right? players. We're breaking down a Which Reddit post, a celebration of a player known as the Sidestep King. Mm. This isn't just about some game, it's a peek into how mm. online communities craft their own legends, their own mythologies. It's incredible, these digital spaces become like breeding yeah. grounds for AI is modern gonna make my head heroes way and too big. Now. Totally. So the so poem rare. is called The Song of the Sidestep. I feel my Can't ego inflating right. by the second. And it was written by Siobhosh Rahani as a tribute to this player known as Fanhaunters. Oh, Fanhaunt, a legend. Legend? He's famous, I mean, you say or should so. I say notorious, in the Heroes of the Storm world for notorious. his mastery of, you guessed it, sidestepping. Sidestepping. Yeah, it's this technique where you dodge enemy attacks, like perfectly timed, super precise. Hold on, so you're in a battle. 
chaos everywhere, and you're dodging attacks left and yep. right. Yep, precisely. Yep. It's more than just That's being me. quick, though. I do it's that. It's predicting what your opponent will do next. It is. It's doing understanding that. the rhythm of the entire game, this basically. Was a possibility. In here's the storm. Sidestepping is important. Yeah, yeah. But this guy, Thanos, he's turned it into an art. And this poem, it captures I did. that artistry, the skill. Oh, beautifully. That's a good I mean, one. I gotta Rohani use that uses more. this language, almost mythical, it's describing Thanos just dominating. He's at the top of the leaderboard, outplaying everyone, and gets this all while casually sipping tea. The tea. The tea. It's perfect. I do sip This tea small detail just throws in this touch of humor, makes this larger-than-life figure a bit more, you know, human. Yeah. Like, tea even analysis. mythical heroes need their caffeine boost. Into right. the song of the side stage. And it's not just the tea. The whole poem has this playful, humorous tone. Like, there's a line about Van Hotz's strategic plays, what gamers call macro, being, and I quote, worth the same. Then there's another about how he turns matches into windless fights for anyone going up against him. Okay, for those who aren't familiar with MOBAs, these games like Heroes of the Storm, what's macro? Good question. Macro is all about those big picture strategy decisions, like which objectives are most important, podcast, when to press your advantage, that sort of thing. So it's about like outsmarting your opponent on a whole other level. Exactly. And if the poem is anything to go by fan huts, he excels at that too. Man, he makes it sound effortless, but I can't imagine being on the other side of that. No, Rohani, he actually no name thanks for gifting this up to Sweaty the Johnson. Outside, right in the plane. Really? Yeah, there's this Welcome tongue in tone like, like it celebrates how good Fan Hot is, but also acknowledges, hey, it can be frustrating playing against this guy. Right, like it's what makes him so interesting. People admire him, but there's also that bit of, oh man, not him again. Like those figures from old myth, you know, larger than life. Absolutely, it's like his his character in the game. It's bigger Are than they the talking game. about the poem so much? He embodies oh, I put the Reddit thread of the song of the sidestep king in. Oh. So the technically, this is poem form, too, not song form, I guess. Games community, celebrating players who really mastered it. And speaking of the community, their reaction to this poem, this ode to the sidestep king, is oh, oh, the comment section, right? Always a fascinating place when something like this drops. Seriously, you've got your hardcore fans praising the poem like he nailed it. But then there's the internet humor, classic stuff like service of the Wendy's. Yeah, I love that. Right. But then it takes this turn. It's really interesting. Yeah, the whole debate about who Van Hots plays against, some people weren't thrilled. Said he mostly targets lower skilled players, specifically bronze ranking. That's like way below the top. Yeah, somebody Wait said he's minute. beating up on bronze players and calling it content. Oh no, it's Ow. it's taking the angry Reddit comments everywhere. now. What's good Angry Reddit comments are in so there now, not like you this. Really find an equal opponent? <laughs> or is there room uh, for I don't or know, entertainment, even if it means dominating oh, someone less experienced? Right, and to be fair, some people defend the fan hots. He said he often plays based on what his viewers request. So it's not him specifically seeking out like easy wins, it's him engaging with his audience. Uh -huh. Which, you tell them. If you think about it, goes back to the poem itself. It pokes fun at his opponents while celebrating his skill. It's almost as if Rohani knew this exact discussion would happen and wove it into the poem itself. Wow, never thought of it that way. So this, what, seemingly simple poem has sparked this whole conversation. Multiple layers about skill, sportsmanship, how online communities work. It's amazing. It shows you just how complex these digital spaces can be. It's more than just, did you win or lose? It's about community, who you are online, finding your place in this digital world. Yeah, especially in a game like Heroes of the Storm. It's got dedicated fans, but it's a niche community. It's this tight-knit group who really love this one game that maybe isn't as mainstream. Yeah, and even their subreddit, the top 1% section, it's usually for serious strategy talk, right? But it's full of these inside jokes, references to the poem. It shows how deeply rooted this shared language, this culture, is within the Heroes of the Storm community. It makes you realize, even in these smaller, focused communities, there's so much passion, so much creativity. Exactly, and that passion, it can come out in unexpected ways. Fan art, videos, sure, but poetry, it shows you the power games like Heroes of the Storm have to inspire people creatively, even years after they came out. And it goes beyond the game itself, doesn't it? It's the community that builds up around it. The shared experiences, the jokes, the arguments about who's the best sidestep king. You got it. And what this, this isn't just in gaming no either. That's Look me. at any online community, book clubs, movie forums, fan pages for bands. They all have their oh heroes, God. their debates, God. their own ways of expressing that shared passion. It's like these online worlds reflecting something we all crave, that need to connect to belong.
Exactly. And in those connections, we find that shared language, the jokes, and yes, even epic poems celebrating legendary sidestep kings. So we spent all this time on the sidestep king, this poem, this whole world of heroes of the storm. What does it all mean? Like, what can we, what can our listeners take away from this deep dive into online gaming, poetry, these passionate communities? You know, it's a good reminder, I think. We shouldn't just write off these online spaces. Yeah. You know, what might seem like, oh, it's just a poem about video game here. It can actually tell so much more about how communities work, this hero worship, Mind control. how we're all connecting online all these days. It's like they say, don't judge a book by its cover right. You might see an online forum, a subreddit, and think, oh, it's just people messing around. But there's often Shit. so much more beneath the surface. It's shared experiences, yeah. inside jokes. Yeah, and even epic poems like we've seen. Absolutely, and this goes way beyond gaming, too. Now, now that I've listened to a few of these in a row, a there's club, definitely a part where they start saying, like, it starts sounding a little samey. Side -step kinks, right? It uses People a lot of, like, know, the same what words that pretty, pretty often, often though. Who inspire others. It's a good point. We should approach these online spaces not with judgment, but with curiosity. You honestly never know what you'll find. Could be a hilarious meme, perfectly sums up something you all relate to. Could be an amazing discussion about a book you love. Or even, like, some fan-made thing so good it rivals the original. It's true. <laughs> and, you know, maybe you'll be inspired to contribute something yourself. Maybe you'll... Create the next viral meme, write some incredible fan fiction, even compose a song, a tribute to a digital legend. Who knows? Now there's a challenge. So that's about it for our deep dive into the world of online communities. We've explored these shared passions, how the digital and real world kind of blur together, and the amazing ways we connect with each other in this digital age. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, keep exploring, keep connecting, and keep diving deep. Oh, so close. That's complete time to defeat. This is the only ramp? Yeah. Well, we, we had a bunch earlier as well, but this is uh don't only ramp. You've been struck down. Choose a thousand double kill. You're really curious about what it would say on the macro feed, Nova macro feed? Yeah, I'm curious about that one too. Someone, someone should uh, donate for your macro Nova again tomorrow, and then I'll put I'll, I'll put on the, the podcast about the Reddit thread while we're playing macro Nova. We we should do that. I'm gonna try to do that tomorrow. We'll put it on the YouTube as well. So if you're not here tomorrow, you'll see it on YouTube. We definitely need to do that. That's the plan for sure. I'm level 20. It's over. The slime machine has arrived. Slime. 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 Can knock over walls. Oh, I know. You get focused down a little too fast, though. But you know, we're whittling them down over time, slow and steady. Oh, 
Oh, big slimes. You in the wrong part of town, brother. Can't even run. Look at him panic queuing backwards. You can panic queue backwards, but you cannot stop the monster. Macro Mercury. Oh. Not even Macro Mercury. I'm sliding. Oops. You thought I could have had the Junkrat? I, I'm, I'd have to double check the clip. My initial thoughts were... There were buildings? Like there were buildings there that would kill me if I octoed in and I didn't feel like my team was close enough to kill him that fast. But maybe I could have. Oh boy, black holing murky left, right, and center, man. Hog! Slime! 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 Oh my god, that Omerky! Oh, even the raid boss, even the raid boss cannot escape from the might of a nano Merky. I didn't even auto attack there, I was blinded. I was purely, that was purely rock on my Q button and nothing else. That's all that was. Just the rock on the Q button. Nano slime. GG.